Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Carrie Lynn. We're here with Frank O'Collin from Australia for the University of Acadia uh, Talk Show call. Tonight being the uh, fourth day of April, the fourth month, or I'm sorry, the fifth month in May in 2011 for those in the States. And uh, we're here with Frank tonight to cover some interesting uh, updates, changes, and uh, corrections, and more information put into the canon. And uh, just as a quick reminder to everyone, uh, this is for educational purposes only. And nothing said here on the call is for legal advice and should be taken as such. So with that, Frank, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Terry. Thanks so much. And welcome everyone who's on the call tonight listening live. And also, thank you and welcome to those that will be listening later on the download, either from TalkShoe.com or from the audio files that are listed there on university.ucadia.info. So for those listening live, you can listen to it again by getting the download, which will be put on to university.ucadia.info. And again, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to listen. As usual, what I'd like to do is cover some important updates over the next hour. And then for the second hour, and even if we run a bit over time, I, I don't mind, in being able to answer any and all questions you have. Well, last week we covered, I think, a very important issue and a very timely one about the power of prayer, and in particular, the power of prayer in their own system. And in fact, that the most important prayers of the Christian uh, religions themselves prove as an absolute fact that no one in their courts has any right to claim guardianship. We've got that from our Father who art in heaven. Our Father being in heaven, therefore no one in the court, unless they claim to be God or greater than God, can claim to be guardian. We covered also the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord Jesus, therefore, in that prayer is our custodian. Therefore, the clerk cannot claim to be the custodian. And then we covered the prayer of how Mary where uh, Mary is appointed as the executor. But the point and the theme of last week is that there are things around us to help us. There are things available to us today that can calm our concern, our fears, our, our, our sadness, and that really we shouldn't lose hope. That being said, I want to cover that theme again today because change continues to increase. So there are three things I want to cover tonight. The first is this perennial question that people keep asking. Where is the divine creator in everything that's happening in the world? Yes, there might be a few wins. There might be a a few benefits. But for all the benefits and for all the wins, there seems to be the continuing evil, the continuing attack against people trying to stand up. So where is the divine creator in all of this? Why doesn't the divine creator directly intervene? And is there any hope in this crazy world? I want to cover that again because it's a crucial issue. It's, it's how so many people are genuinely feeling. I then want to cover the second topic, which is the question of enforcement. Where is the enforcement in Eucadia against the pirates and the courts? I had an email this week which, which asked, and I'll read it in a moment, where basically they asked, look, please, we need armour. We need, we need stronger tools. Where are they? You've been promising them. Where are they? When are they going to come? So I want to cover that with you, and particularly what has been worked on in the last few weeks. And the third topic uh, that I want to round off tonight is the issue that people still have in the back of their mind, that while they like some of the things of Eucadia, they may still have a lot of concerns about some of the material. And, And how do you know? How can it be proven that this is truly divinely inspired? Or are you you being, as some people may fear, are you just simply following or being part of yet another rabbit hole, a blind trail? Prove to me that this is not just simply the Roman cult version 2. Prove to me that this isn't the New World Order 2.0. Again, they're all legitimate concerns, all, all concerns that need to be addressed. So I want to round those off tonight I know they're broad issues, but I want to round them off because they are 
things that continue to bounce around in people's concerns in chats and just a general feeling is this moving forward or are there being lots of promises but not a lot of real action I want to I want to cover those things honestly at the end of the day at the end of the chat I, I can't make any of you believe anything your opinions are your opinions but what I can do and I hope to do in, in, in this call is to ex express to you some of the incredible work to talk about some of the incredible new work that's coming the implication of it to answer some of your concerns and offer examples that are out there already that you can look to and at the end show that really we are coming to a point where we are seeking balance balance in ourselves balance in our communities and that to put in perspective what we're discussing and needing in days weeks and months the existing system has had 1260 years to perfect 1260 years or days as Daniel and as the book even of Revelation describes it's the length of their reign so even though we are frustrated and even though that we want things to today and I know more than anyone else wants to see these things finished today let's keep it in perspective that what we're doing in days and in weeks they've done in decades and centuries and millennia well let's get started a lot's happened this week of course the assassination of Osama bin Laden and the ensuing reactions around the world and the possible consequences of that we saw the beatification of Pope John Paul II the fastest beatification in history and we saw the marriage uh, in the firm of the new royal couple of uh, William and Kate so a lot's happened around May Day a day that represents in back to the Mithraic times of the Day of Atonement the Day of Blood the Day of Sacrifice of course there may have been another historic moment that just missed out which was the attempted assassination of uh, Gaddafi which they missed on so certainly if we take what's happened in the last week there's overwhelming evidence that the system is still very much aware of history is aware of the importance of dates of history and continue to manufacture history as they've done for hundreds and in fact for thousands of years at the same time as I'm opened up whilst there has been some great stories of people succeeding and taking information that we've shared over the last few weeks the information about how to stand in court the information about being able to identify yourself as trust recipient number etc etc holding your own title calling upon and and, uh, and seeking the oaths and the bonds of the judges the role of the general executor the use of these letters and instruments the decree of nullity and the dissolving of any claims of guardianship even the prayer all these things in spite of all these things coming as a number of you know there are still good people being arrested every day there are still people who are having their documents and their instruments wholly ignored and laughed at by the system and on a bigger picture there's still the concerns about the poisoning that's taking place still in the environment the vaccination program that hasn't changed there's the earthquakes there's a concern of Elenin the comet and other astronomical events so there's still in spite of the positive message that we've been talking about still an underlying concern that many even I have about the future now I I have no influence over the future none but what I can share with you tonight is some understandings that I have gathered over time that has given me a better understanding of where the divine creator fits in all this because when the Japanese earthquake took place and with the possibility of more events like the terrible terrible tragedies that have taken place in America in the last week and the deaths that have taken place in the tornadoes there are two things that people particularly people who are in positions of 
ecclesiastical power run to do. One is to say it's God's will. And for others, where is God? Now, I've said this before in terms of concepts, and I believe it to be a a fair summary. The concept of an uncaring, impartial, possibly even cruel God, to me, is a worse concept than the concept of no God at all. And I have had a problem with that since I was a child. When I asked, why are people starving? If God loves us, why are people starving in Africa? Why are they allowing these crazy people like... um, from Zimbabwe, Mugabe, who was over in Rome to celebrate the beatification. He was there to celebrate the beatification of John Paul. Why does God allow these these awful people? Why did God allow Osama bin Laden to do terrible, terrible things? And the answer I got constantly, constantly is that it's a mystery, it's God's will, uh, these things happen. Well, given we are talking about uh, change and given we we discuss the coming of one heaven, we're discussing these major issues. I think it's only only fair that we answer what what does this mean? Now, if you look at the model of Eucadia and you go to uh, www.eucadia.com, I spent many years working on two books: the Journey of UCA and the journey of self. And in the journey of UCA, what I tried to do was summarize the research, the meditation, and the inspiration that came in making sense of how the universe, how the divine may have brought the dream that is the life of the universe into being. And when you look at that, you see that there were some very practical but also some massive issues that had to be dealt with, one not the least being the chicken and the egg. If rules and matter are required for existence to be sustained, what came first, rules or matter? What came first, the chicken and the egg? But in a more relevant point for what we're talking about now, if you look at, for example, Chapter 4, now to go to this, you go to eucadia.com, you click on the icon which says Awareness, you then go and have a look at the uh, chapter, chapter 4, the concept of existence, and then have a look at 4.4, reality and dimension. Now what we say there is dimension is position observed by the observer relative to other objects. In other words, dimension being existence, being space, requires the existence of objects. It's not some independent value. It requires things to be in position relative to one another. Now, in three-dimensional space, that means that you've got something above you, below you, to your left, to your right, to the forward, to the back. You need six things around you for your position to be validated. Now, if you took that as a concept where those things were merely points, just points of thought, points of UCA, then the only way the only way that the universe of dimension could possibly be sustained, that is the the dimension that we're in now, is that the unique collective awareness is constantly and actively creating an infinite number of points above, below, left, right, forward, backwards, in order to validate that every single point has six things around it, six points around it. So if one of those points ceased to exist, the entire fabric of the universe would cease to exist. If one point of thought, if one instant of thought ceased to exist, the whole thing, countries, cities, nations, empires, planets, solar systems, galaxies, superclusters, would all cease to exist in an instant. If one point of thought ceased to exist, So as much as we feel that we are under the thumb, as much as we might feel that the world is against us, that nothing is changing, that nothing will change the world we live in, our role is far.